All right. We are going to talk about map stories. For a map tells a story about the land and what uh, the map is showing. Maps are like stories. They can tell about arguments between people in positions of power, such as the Calvert family of Maryland and the Penn family of Pennsylvania. They can tell about wars won or lost, lands discovered, trips taken or planned, and more. This map that I have over here shows um, a much of the original colonies in, in uh, Maryland that we will learn or in the United States that we will learn about in eighth grade. Now, right here, we have Maryland, and right to the north of Maryland is Pennsylvania. And there's a little bit of land in between the two states. There was a big argument between the, um, the Penn family who owned um, Pennsylvania and the Calvert family that um, Maryland, to whom Maryland was granted. And uh, we will learn about that dispute um, a little later in uh, this course. And there's many other stories a map can share, share in the way it is drawn. The first maps were scratched into the dirt using sticks and stones. Symbols were used for trees, mountains, or other landmarks. But what happened if it rained and that map was washed away? Or you walked halfway there and couldn't remember if you should turn right or left by the woolly mammoth. You might have drawn a map in the sandbox before, showing a friend where something was hidden somewhere else in the playground. You might have used some rocks or things to show that. But since a map in the dirt could easily be washed away, soon people figured out how to use different materials to make maps that they could take with them on their journey. Over time, maps have been sketched on soft clay that was hardened by the sun. They were carved into stone tablets or drawn with berry juice on animal hides. They might have been painted on silk, woven into reeds, printed on paper. And now, a days, we store them on computers. Now, the world, word map comes from the Latin word mappa, which means cloth. And you can imagine as soon as one had cloth, whether it be animal hide or woven cloth, that that would have been a wonderful place on which to draw a map. Up here, we see a um, clay map from ancient Babylon, maybe as old as the Tower of Babel that we heard about last year. And here we have a leather map that where the streets and houses have been embossed into the leather. Now, after agreeing that maps were way, were way better than following a trail of breadcrumbs back home, like Hansel and Gretel did, people got really into making maps or cartography. People who make maps are called cartographers, and they can show almost anything on a map, from the amount of rainfall throughout the world to where the corona hotspots are and where chocolate ice cream is most popular. If you take a look at this map at the bottom of the United States, this is the ice cream map and you can see where the most popular um, flavors of ice cream are. See if you can guess what flavor is most popular in Maryland. Some ki common kinds of maps. The first one we're going to talk about is called a physical map. A physical map shows landforms and bodies of water, basically the natural world around you. One type of physical map is a relief map, also known as a topographical map, which is bumpy to show high, how high or low the land is. And later in this course, we are going to make our own topographical maps of Maryland. The map below here on the right, on the right, bottom right, is a topographical map of Maryland. And you can see those mountains are stretching from south to north on the left-hand side of the map. 
And you can also see how low the, the um, land is. Uh, the darker green, the darker the green color is, the lower the land is on the eastern shore going out to um, Delaware over here. The map right above it um, also shows some of the physical characteristics. We can see the Chesapeake Bay here. We can see the Susquehanna River coming. And there are some, um, some landmarks that have been labeled, so, such as Assateek Island and um, the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad. We will be talking about that later on this year as well. In Fort McHenry, these, this is like a map of all of our stories we'll be hear, hearing about. And um, we also have an Antietam. You'll hear about that in eighth grade. And it's a big battlefield out to the west. And right here is the Appalachian Trail. And when you get a little older, you might like to take the four state challenge, which is to see if you can go through Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania in one day on the Appalachian Trail. Another type of map we have is called a political map. And a political map shows how people have divided up the world and the boundaries that people have created. So up here we have the counties of Maryland, all of the different counties. Um, and most of us live in Baltimore County, which is purple here, or in that little white part right inside of Baltimore County, which is Baltimore City. And if you ever go to fill out a form and you're asked what county you live in, if you live in the city, you're going to write Baltimore City. If you live in the county, you're going to write Baltimore County. And the, that's and each one of these counties also has a story behind it. Who was Anne Arundel? Who's Prince George? How about the Calvert family? Who are they? Who is Mr. Garrett? And what have you? So we will learn in Cecil. We will learn about Cecil um, in in this course as well. Below here is literally a political map. These are the congressional districts of Maryland. For each um, of these districts, we send some representatives to Congress who vote on our behalf. And you can see that they've divided, the, con the state is divided into different districts. And there's a story behind those divisions as well. And you will learn those as you grow older. Here's another physical map, or uh, rather a political map of Maryland. And on here we can see all of the uh, roads, all the highways that human beings have built, and also many of the smaller cities and um, towns that are here. We can also see our relationship as Marylanders to the states that are around us, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. Those are the states that border us. We'll learn more about that um, soon in this very special area called Washington, DC. Another type of map is a thematic map. A thematic map is a map which shows specific info, such as weather, population, religions, or languages. That ice cream map that we looked at earlier was a thematic map. Up here on the right is a, a map that shows the average annual precipitation in Maryland. And precipitation means um, things that fall from the sky, such as our water that falls from the sky, such as snow and rain and sleet, that is all considered pre precipitation. And this map has codes, has a special legend and code that can tell us where is there the most precipitation and where is there the least. And if we look on here, we'll see the most is all the way out here in the western part of Maryland that is purple or magenta. And there's some mountains over there. And uh, what happens is the mountains get loads and loads of rain on this side of the mountain 
And then you see the least amount comes right over here, um, just to the east of those mountains where the mountains have blocked some of the rain from coming. And so they get less precipitation right over there. You can see where most of you all live in Baltimore City and Baltimore County over here. Um, is It's coated with green or dark green. And so we get maybe um, on average 42 to 44 inches a year, uh, something like that. It's maybe some, a little bit more and a little bit less in some places. And that is that they were measuring the rain from 1961 to 1990. So as we all know, things are changing every day with our climate. And um, we, these are interesting maps to look at. Maybe we can find a map that shows this year versus last year for annual um, average precipitation. Um, below that is another map which shows population per square mile. And uh, you can see in Baltimore City is the darkest reddish, reddest color over there with a um, population of greater than 5,000 people per square mile. And then up north near the border of Pennsylvania, you see it's yellow. There it is only 100 to 250 people in a mile. And people live a lot more spread out up there. If you drive up there, you'll see a lot of farms and not, and houses are not very close together. 